topic today is top tips for trend trading. It is uh, a topic related to technical analysis. Um, I have piled in some thoughts about what may be helpful when you trade trends. Uh, if you do have any kind of questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the uh, chat. And um, in the meantime, let's begin. So, uh, you know, this saying uh, that a trend is your friend and sometimes um, different um, teachers and trainers say, well, just follow a trend or buy in an uptrend, sell in a downtrend. And well, these are beautiful phrases, but um, they sound very, very easy. But we know that in fact, trading trends is not an easy thing, um, despite the fact that it may seem so the, the first sight. It is quite difficult to find the best entry level, the best exit level to manage um, money related to uh, this position. So mm, a lot of questions arise. Um, I think that it is necessary to um, come to their, um, let's say, um, things where they have started and have a quick look at the Dow theory because um, the understanding of it really helps to understand the logic of the market and um, create a trend trading system, strategy, or the general approach, which uh, will be really um, logical and profitable. So the Dow theory has six principles. It is not really big theory, and we can just put it on one slide. The first thing um, known to everyone that the market discounts everything, well, that we don't need um, any kind of um, other data, no fundamental stuff, just look at the charts. That, of course, is, um, well, a um, thing we can dispute. Um, but um, in case uh, of analysis, technical analysis, the market, the chart certainly offers us a lot of things to work with. And although I'm not a fan of foregoing fundamental analysis, well, um, I think that they should both work together. Still, uh, there is a lot of information in the price chart and it's difficult to argue with that. Um, more important things is that um, we should always remember that there are various trends at a certain moment in time for uh, any kind of uh, financial instruments. Um, there are um, uh, uptrends, sideways downtrends, that is clear, that is um, the classifications in terms of direction, but every trend, um, every market has some big primary trends, have, which are uh, made of in turn uh, of secondary trends and some really small minor trends. So these things are like Russian dolls which, um, in which uh, the bigger thing contains the smaller thing. The fractal structure of the market and um, actually the logic of trend trading comes out of this thing. Uh, the thing when we have a look at various time frames, we see that there is a big trend probably on the large time frame, on small time frames, there may be smaller trends which go in the opposite direction to the big primary trend. And our goal in all these various uh, trends of different scales is to find the point in the market where the um, smaller trends start turning in line with the bigger trend to find this uh, good area of entry, which offers an opportunity to have a high probability trade and join the market as close to that spot as possible. So when correction ends and the tra trade, the trend resumes, to put it in more simple terms. Um, our insights uh, from Dow Jones, Dow theory include uh, the revelation that the market must 
uh, confirm each other. Well, that is about some correlated markets. Um, like if we speak about currencies, for example, um, Australian dollar versus US dollar or um, and New Zealand dollar versus US dollar, more or less correlated markets. Uh, volume must confirm the trend, and um, this is indeed so, especially if we are talking about stock trading. Volume um, is important, and without um, a sort of increases in volume during the impulses of a trend, well, the trend simply doesn't exist because uh, no one uh, will um, file funds into the market and well, it, it will just be sideways. So um, volumes can tell us really, really a lot. And uh, well, um, another important thing which shouldn't be forget it is that we believe that the trend will continue until we have definite proof of um, the otherwise situation. So this is just what we see every time when we trade trends, that um, when the market, the price approaches support level of an uptrend, let's say, it is expected that uh, this support level will rather hold than be broken. Of course, any situations may happen, but if we um, judge probability, when we are within trend, um, we believe that this trend will continue. And um, it is less risky to trade in the direction of a trend than trying to catch a reversal. Uh, both uh, approaches are possible, but the risks are very, very different. So uh, the main outtakes here, multiple trends, multiple timeframes, um, volumes and, well, uh, the thing that a trend is a rather strong structure. It is the base element of the market. And when we try to um, look for reversal and to believe that there will be a reversal, um, we are going against the market and the risks increase. Actually, um, I think it might be interesting to have a separate topic about reversals because um, it is a big deal um, that can't be included in what we speak about today because today we are uh, discussing trends more than reversal of these trends. Um, one of the first thing I uh, like about trends and uh, one of the first things I do when I work with trends, I um, draw trend lines. And this is actually the simplest step one can make, but uh, it doesn't mean that it is not efficient or important. Um, traders sometimes search for some, um, some complicated indicators, trend indicators, in order to get some insights. But uh, what is better than a good trend line? Um, I don't know, actually. The thing is that um, it is necessary to have an idea how to do trend lines right. And well, the first thing, of course, that a trend line can't be just drawn through just one uh, point. Uh, we need to have at least two points to connect them with a line. That is obvious. Next thing, trend line should have a bias. Um, so we do not usually call some horizontal support or resistance levels which are um, drawn through highs and lows. Trend lines, which these are just levels. Line has a bias and um, it is... Mm, well, uh, thought that this bias should be more than 45 um, degrees, the angle. So if in practice, this means that if we connect uh, these two points with a trend line, the distance between them should be about 20 or 30 candlesticks or bars, uh, however you call them. Next thing, 
uh, very important uh, is that trend lines are aimed to make the picture on the chart clearer, clearer and not more complicated in any way. So um, sometimes we see the situation, we look at the chart and see an uptrend there because, well, there are higher highs and higher lows. It's an uptrend, what can we say? And uh, some people think, why should I draw a trend line? I see that this is an uptrend. Mm, I will just start trading. However, mm, that is not the right approach because mm, you may see it at some point, but uh, the exact positions, the exact markings on the chart should be made and uh, not everything may be seen just with an eye. Uh, when you have the trend line on the chart, it kind of acts as not only a support and resistance, it uh, creates a clear picture of what is happening in the market and it can be a basic framework from which you will continue with your analysis. Of course, uh, it is not wise to add a lot of trend lines to the chart. Uh, once uh, there was um, a candidate to be an analyst and um, she brought me a chart uh, a printed list of paper where uh, it wasn't possible to see the price because there were so many different lines that it was crazy. So that is uh, definitely not the goal. A couple of trend lines um, we, are possible. We know that it's possible to draw trend lines in a way that they cross the price if it's necessary for you, if you feel that this trend line looks natural at that place. Um, it is possible to connect different um, lows of the price, for example, with different trend lines, because we know that sometimes um, the market may have a peculiar structure. The ultimate goal is to pick out the most obvious trend lines, so you don't need to invent a wheel here. You need to um, plot on the chart the lines which will be visible and natural for other traders. In this case, uh, it would mean that you have picked up uh, the thing uh, to which other traders will react and this will definitely have an impact on price action because um, it's, after all, the actions of traders which determine where they will put their orders and as a result, which level will um, trigger important moves of the price. So trend lines should be obvious, clear, and well, um, beyond that, um, there is freedom of um, expression there. And it is not, I think, really possible to say to someone that you haven't drawn this trend line incorrectly. Um, no, well, trend lines is not an answer to a test. It's a thing that should help you make a decision. So um, that is not an answer in itself, but just a thing that can um, help in market analysis. To go with uh, the general approach of uh, trend trading, uh, it is important to have a plan. And of course, uh, everyone trades trends differently. But I think that um, we can distinguish um, a common thing here, which may be a plan. So of course, at first, we need to determine the trend in question. Um, that can be done using various things, starting from trend lines we have discussed and all other things which are related to price action. Maybe there are some uh, chart patterns there. Um, next, technical indicators are helpful. The simplest ones like moving averages and various indicators which have moving averages at, as their basis. For example, envelopes, um, Ishimoku indicator, um, I don't know what else, Bollinger Bands, uh, things like that, uh, they all have um, similar foundation. 
Um, of course, it is sensible to conduct analysis of multiple time frames to start with bigger time frames and um, get to um, smaller time frames because uh, we don't know what trend is uh, posing the most interest for you. But um, obviously, if it is a trend on one hour chart, for example, it is surely a part of some bigger trend on daily and weekly charts. And better to consult that time frames to know that um, that you are not at some important levels on the big scale or maybe that you are at some important levels on big scale that depends um, actually if um, you pursue this idea of trend trading i'd like to recommend you um, the triple screen trading system by Alexander Elder, because after all, it is, I think, one of the best ways to approach the market. I don't know whether you um, whether you are familiar with that or not, but um, that triple screen system is aimed to um, enter the market in line with the trend on the biggest time frame, but to find the best uh, place of entry in order not to um, in order to for the market entry to be as precise as possible. Um, the name is Alexander Elder. I can write. I can type it here. This one. I think that um, we can uh, um, make even a separate webinar about his trading system. And it's called Triple Screen. And um, the idea is that you use this kind of free filters to uh, filter out the bad signals of trend trading so that only the signals of best quality remain. This is just, um, I remember it because of uh, multiple time frames and this triple screen system involves free time frames, like free screens. So next thing, uh, we go to planning entries and um, in a trend where may be actually different kind of approaches. So if we take an uptrend, we can buy in several places we can buy just as the market is rebounding from support we can wait uh, until the market breaks above the resistance of the correction trend we can wait until the price breaks above the previous high uh, so here various plans of actions are possible but um, of course uh, the ideal scenario is to buy at support if we have a solid confirmation that the market reversed in the direction of a trend from this support then it means that we are buying low and we'll be able to close position um, somewhere um, in less risky place because it may happen that the trend won't break above the previous high so um, the lower we buy the better in this case um, speaking about uh, technical indicators um, i don't know whether you like it or not the adx indicator i um, actually um, was rather skeptic about it um, at the beginning, but uh, now I start using it more and more to judge trend strength. Um, and uh, in combination with some other tools, it can be pretty effective. So uh, imagine that we have made the decision, um, the strategy we um, have about trends. So what will be the logic of our trading? Uh, at which areas uh, fundamentally, <laughs> not the good word fundamentally, but in, like in general, at which levels we will uh, make our entry and according to which logic. 
Next uh, comes uh, take profit and stop loss. And um, with stop losses, uh, trend trading actually offers um, rather interesting opportunities. I mean, of course, the fact that trend trading is a type of trading when we can uh, indeed try moving stop loss orders to break even point and even use trailing stop which is also a nice uh, solution. Sometimes people ignore it for some reason. I don't know why. Because trailing stops are rather interesting and they do help in many cases to get the most out of a trade. So um, then we make our bet that indeed the market will move in the direction of a trend. Um, there is no big point in having a very big stop loss if we decide on the size of stop losses and of course there are different approaches about that related to technical levels, to the size of your equity, to your risk management. But in general, in trend trading, uh, there is sense to make it well rather tight because uh, we make our bet that the trend will continue and if it doesn't, well, um, no point uh, in uh, sitting around the situation and um, looking at the reversal of this trend, right? So um, the stop loss should be rather tight. In addition, uh, the positions of stop losses, if you well buy at support, uh, of course, there is sense to place the stop loss uh, beyond the support, a bit below, so it's a natural place and um, no real necessity to think much about that. Um, trailing stop, uh, the size of that, um, of course, depends on volatility on the instrument you trade. Um, sometimes there is sense to add some indicators to um, stop loss uh, location, determination, <laughs> let's say. Uh, the indicators that may help with stop losses are average true range and um, another thing, parabolic um, SAR, stop and reverse, uh, also um, provide good levels for stops and parabolic actually allows us to use uh, trailing stops uh, well manually we can um, use the dots of these indicators as locations for trailing stops uh, set your target you know, well what i meant here is that um, tra in trends the situation may uh, move rather fast things may change fast so um, it is wise to do some projection of where the price will go and to have uh, some um, level which will some order which will close your trade in place so that um, otherwise you don't uh, return to your open trade and see that the price went to the target area and well didn't uh, close the trade and then pulled back that would be unfortunate and um, when projecting the targets in a trend um, i advise you to have a look at the instrument um, of technical analysis called fibonacci expansion so traders often use fibonacci retracement level but there is also a tool fibonacci expansion and um, well if you see a trend and uh, the trend is more or less in the initial stages, um, that um, points of the initial trend may be used well with this tool to um, project the targets. Risk reward ratio I always added to the uh, presentations and webinars when I have an opportunity to add it to a webinar because that is really important. Um, so that if you use stop losses and take profits, make sure that the ratio between these things 
is uh, well in favor of reward and not in favor of the risk. If we speak about trends, uh, there uh, we can choose uh, the risk reward ratio starting from one to two. So reward double the risk, but uh, that may be bigger for trend trading. So like one to three, one to five, um, that is not a range. So here uh, we expect the market to continue moving in a specific direction. That's why we can uh, do different uh, variants with that and um, well expect the bigger reward here. And another thing, manage your position. Um, the things here you know, involves the fact that if you uh, do not close your trade after I don't know, several minutes or hours, it is possible to make things with that, um, do um, manage the size of the trade. The things like scaling in and scaling out are rather interesting techniques. So scaling in means adding to a position when uh, you have initially a small trade, but as the trend goes in your favor, you increase um, the trade by um, well opening new uh, trades at uh, different levels. Uh, this is an interesting thing, but um, I'd like to point out that to uh, do it successfully, it's necessary to start with a smaller position than you usually uh, do, and then to uh, increase it to open new trades as the price goes in your favor at specific levels you have identified in advance. Uh, you would ask me why do that at all? Why waste time on, on this uh, management of trades, multiple trades uh, for one trade idea? What is the point? And the point is that um, we know that it is extremely difficult to identify a trend at an early stage. Um, it may seem like a trend, we may see a couple of um, higher, or for example, one higher low and think that an uptrend maybe, but, um, and we want to join the market as early as possible, but we see the risks that this is not a trend at all and some sideways movement of the market, so we do not want to get burned. And as a result, to limit the risk, it's possible to open a smaller trade than you usually do. And if you are right and the market continues in the direction of your trade, you will be able to add to a position at some uh, levels which are, well, convenient according to the chart. And so this way, uh, some of your trade will be started at a low level which means that you would be able to make money on the entire movement of the price. Scaling out is the opposite concept, uh, which says that you partially close the trade as the price goes in your favor. So position is profitable, but you partially close it. Uh, why do that? Well, because a trend can reverse and will reverse at some point, and um, in many cases, we just can't say when exactly this will happen. Uh, I think that in practically all cases, we can't say with 100% um, certainty. So uh, the idea is that um, when we are not sure for how long the trend will continue, it's possible to close some of the trade and leave a minor part of a trade um, be uh, in order to make um, profit on the market as long as possible to stay in the trend as long as possible. So um, I know traders who do that kind of stuff, scaling in, scaling out, they combine it with uh, trailing stops and uh, 
this is a really proactive management of the trade. I am not saying that it should be done in every trade and by everyone. But uh, certainly if um, you do that, you manage the situation and you have an opportunity to get um, the maximum of a trend trading idea. In many cases, then uh, you feel that um, you don't have a lot of ideas or um, something like that. You should try to, well, get the most of the ideas you have and not like um, aim at multiple trades. That is uh, one of the ways of trading. I have some pictures here. So, um, did it manage to put them all on the one uh, slide? So, here we have um, just uh, the idea of trend trading. I think that it is clear to everyone. And uh, just a scaling in example from the currency market that we buy at um, the uh, level of 0 0.89 here. And uh, then at each time the currency pair rises by 50 pips, we increase um, the, the take profit um, arrives at 0 0.91. This is the example of scaling in, or in other words, uh, adding to a position. So these are my advices to you regarding trend trading. What um, I remembered about that, of course, this is a big topic. And um, in the trend trading, I think one of the most things uh, is um, identifying various levels of support and resistance. And also monitoring the strength of a trend uh, with visual analysis, just looking at uh, the structure of a trend. Um, seeing that whether the market respects previous highs or it um, declines and tests support at the previous lows. That uh, is different and uh, can visually tell us whether it is a strong trend or a weaker trend. Various technical indicators uh, I have mentioned already today are helpful um, if we regard the smaller parts of the trend then we'll um, get to work with oscillators to find uh, locations where the market is overbought or oversold and um, of course multiple time frame analysis because uh, no trend exists in vacuum on one market so um, bigger picture is always the knowledge which increases your advantage and it won't put you at disadvantage in no way. So um, if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I should remind you about the premium version of Tremo, which offers uh, various kinds of educational support, the diplomas, the trading signals, so, um, if you are interested, please check the information at the website to join the community. Next week, there will be more webinars um, devoted to technical analysis and its various aspects. Uh, we will talk about range trading and strategies which are the best for range trading, what indicators to use, and things like that. So uh, feel free to check the schedule at Tradimo website and register for the upcoming sessions. And if everyone wants, I'll put the Alexander Elder webinar on the agenda as well sometime in the upcoming weeks. So thank you for your attention, everyone. I wish you the best weekend. And uh, well, the 
profitable trading ahead, the most important stuff for traders. Thank you and goodbye.